In the last video, we constructed the basic layout for our application. The goal for this video is to add the interactivity in our app. There are two things we want to do. If you are scrubbing on a seek bar, we'd like for this label to change and update the tip percentage to be, to be between a value of zero and the maximum tip percentage. And also, as you type the base amount of your bill, of your lunch or dinner or whatever, we want to take that value and dynamically compute the tip and the total. You'll notice that there's no button. So as soon as there's any change in the base value or in the percentage of the tip, we should be recomputing the, the value and update the text view for the tip and total. So opening up Android Studio, all the work we've done so far has been in activity main.xml to construct the layout. All the work we're going to do in this video is going to primarily be in mainactivity.kotlin, which is where we'll have all the business logic. So actually the very first thing I want to do is the seek bar, there's a attribute that I forgot to fill out, which is the max. And this is going to be the maximum value allowed on the seek bar. So by default, the minimum is zero and the maximum, we're going to set it at 30, which means that the maximum tip that you're allowed to leave is 30%. So now going back into main activity, as a first exercise, what I want to do is I would like to be able to react to changes in the seek bar and update this text view with the corresponding with the corresponding value of the seek bar. So in order to do that, first thing we can do is grab a reference to the seek bar. So we'll say seek bar tip. This seek bar tip, this variable is coming from the name of the of the ID that we gave to the seek bar. And we're going to call this method set on seek bar change listener. And what this is doing is you pass in a class, which is a instance of on seek bar change listener. And this is how the Android system will notify you that the user has changed the seek bar. So the way we'll do this is we'll type in object, which is how you do in Kotlin, and you'll define an instance of this class. And then you'll notice that we're getting a complaint here. Object is not abstract and does not implement abstract member. So basically this class has is an abstract class. And so in order to actually implement it, we need to implement those three abstract methods. And the reason I know there's three is if you put your cursor in between the class definition and then type control O, you get this dialog and you can see that the three, the three methods. So these last two, on start tracking touch and on stop tracking touch, we actually aren't interested in these. Like we don't really need to react to them. So I'm going to get rid of the to do's and just um, minimize the body of the function. So um, we still need to implement them, but they'll have an empty implementation. And what we care about is when the user has actually changed the progress on the seek bar, which means that they've done some scrubbing. And the value of the seek bar at that point is going to be progress. So first thing I want to do actually is add a tag so we can kind of get notified using logging that this method has been called. And the value of the tag is going to be the name of our class, which is main activity. That's the convention I usually follow. So the first thing we'll do is just say log.i, pass in the tag, and the on progress changed. And then pass and actually print out the progress that is coming in as this parameter. So let's run the app. And let's open up Logcat. And what we care about is the app Tippy, which is called RKPondi Tippy. And then we only care about info logs. And in particular, I only care about messages which have the text on progress change. And I want to see that this is actually getting called when, when I scrub on this. So let's just see what the value is. So yeah, you can see that the value is going up as I go up. And the maximum value is 30, which is what we had just set. And the minimum is zero. So it looks good. So we are getting, we are able to set that properly. So what we want to do when we get notified that the progress has changed is update the value of this text view. In this text view, we gave it a label of TV tip percent. So what I'm going to say is TV tip percent dot text is equal to uh, the progress, right? So we want to say progress, but this progress is actually an int. What we would like to do is we would make we want to make it a string, and in addition, we want to concatenate a percentage sign after the integer. So the way we can do that is actually using Kotlin's really nice formatting um, structure. So we say dollar sign progress, which is this means to replace this with the actual variable progress, which is integer. And then we can just say percent. Let's try that out. So now as I scrub, you can see that we do, we are properly updating that, that text view. So one of the um, oddities or one of the bugs kind of is that initially the value is hard coded to 15, which is incorrect, right? Um, because the scrub is 
still at the position zero. So what we should do is when we first initialize the app, which is right after set content view, we want to set the seek bar value to be that progress, that, that percentage. So we'll say 15. And in addition, we want to explicitly set the text on the uh, TV tip percent, that label, to be that uh, 15%. And because 15 is something that we're sharing both in this line and this line of the initial value, I'm going to make that into a variable. So then we don't have to keep referencing it. So let me just fill this out. So I'll say 15%, right? And now we want to make 15 into a constant. So I'll add that right below the tag, private. And this is going to be an integer constant value. So initially the progress will be initial tip percent, and then this is going to be initial tip percent as well, like that. Let's try that out. So now we should see the progress bar, the seek bar already be at 15, right in the middle. And then now this value actually makes sense. So now we still get the same behavior. In the same way that we were able to listen to changes on the seek bar, we'd like to do the same thing for changes in the edit text for the base value. So anytime the user uh, types in a value here, we would like to get notified of that and then compute the tip and total. So the way we'll do that, going back into main activity, is quite similar to what we did with the seek bar. We added a seek bar change listener. There's something analogous that happens for the edit text. So we'll say et base, and we're going to add a text change listener. And the, you can see the parameter here is that it takes in a text watcher. And so we're going to create our own instance of a text watcher. And then again, you can see Android Studio is complaining because there are some abstract methods. So I'm going to say Control O to override these methods. And then go down to the text watcher, and you need to implement all three of these. But similar to the on seek bar change listener, we actually are only interested in after text change. This method gets called when the user has actually changed some text. So I'm going to remove the to dos there and just leave an empty implementation. To get a better understanding, let's put a log statement here so that we can understand when this is being called. And in addition to logging the method name, let's also log the value. So S is the editable, which is what the user has actually been typing. Let's run that. And I need to open up logcat. Um, so we get rid of the filter for on progress change. Let's just look at all info level logs. Like before, if we change the seek bar, you get notified of that. And then if we change the base value, you can see I am typing in 800 and we keep getting notified of that, which is exactly what we want. Every time this has changed, we would like to be using that as an opportunity to calculate the tip and total. So I'm going to define a method which does that for us. Say so compute tip and total. And then Android Studio can help us create this function. I'm going to define it inside of main activity. And the idea is that we want to get the value of the base and tip percentage. And then once we have these two numbers, the base and tip percentage, we can calculate the amount for the tip, which is going to be the tip percent times the base. And we can also calculate the value for the total amount, which is the tip plus the base. So the value for the base is going to be whatever is inside of the base. So it's et base, the edit text, base, text. And we need to actually call to string on this. And then this is going to be a string, but in order to do math, we want to to be a double, like we want it to be a decimal, to double. Great, and now we can capture the value of this as base amount. And then we want to get the tip percentage. So that'll be the seek bar. The progress of the seek bar is the percentage of the tip that we want. So this is going to be tip percent. And so now it's a question of just doing the math between these two values, right? So we can say the val tip amount is going to be the multiplication of the base amount times the tip percent. And then the total amount is going to be the base amount plus the tip amount. And so now that we have these two values, all we need to do is actually place them into the corresponding text view. So this one is TV tip amount, and the total is the TV total amount. I'm going to copy the IDs, and we're going to start referencing that here. So we'll say TV tip amount dot text is equal to tip amount. And then we want this to be a string. And so I'm going to say to string, 
And then similarly, we want TV total amount. The text of that should be the total amount to string. Okay, let's try it out. So the tip percentage is 15, and then I can type in 80, and you can actually see that the tip <laughs> computation is a bit off because this is actually more than the base value. Uh, I think I know the reason why. It's because the tip amount should be the base amount times the tip percentage divided by 100 because we need it to be a percentage. So let's try that one more time. Just to make the math easy, let's put in 100. And now it makes sense. 100, 15% of 100 is 15, and that means that the total is 15 plus 100, which is 115. That looks a lot better. One thing that we haven't done yet, though, is um, as I change the tip percentage, we would expect that the tip amount and the total amount should change. And the reason this isn't working yet is because we haven't called this method from the on seek bar change listener. And so all we need to do is call this method whenever the seek bar has been changed. Let's try that now. Now if I say 100, like before we get 15 and 115 as the value, and if I change this, you can see it does actually update properly. Awesome. So there are actually two things that I think we can really improve here. Um, spend a minute to think about what might go wrong or what could we improve on the current implementation. So the first thing is actually a bug. And so let me show you what the bug looks like. So if I backspace, don't have anything in the base amount, then you can see the app just crashed. If we open up Logcat, we see why. I'm trying to look at the very top of the stack trace. You can see fatal exception main on the main thread, um, number format exception, empty string. And so it actually gives us a, a pointer to where this crash occurred. And you can see that we're trying to get the value of whatever's in our edit text. We're calling two string on it, but that's an empty string. And we're calling two double on an empty string. And we don't know how, Android system doesn't know how to convert an empty string into a double number. So that's the issue. So what we want is we want to guard this call. And before we make it, we want to check, is our edit text actually empty? And if it is, we don't want to try and convert that to a number. So we'll say if et base dot text, and the string value of that is empty, then a couple of things we want to do. One is we want to actually update the value of our tip and total to be empty because it doesn't make sense to show anything then. And then the other thing is we want to do an early return so we don't actually execute any of this logic. So we'll say the text is empty for both the tip and total. And then we also want to return early. Let's try that. So now if I type in some value and I backspace, you can see that we don't crash. And then we've also appropriately cleared out the value for tip and total. One more thing we can do is actually we can get rid of the two string method because this, the value of the text, which is an editable, that actually has an is empty method. So there's no need to actually call two string on it. Okay, that was one of the issues. What is another thing that we could improve? The second thing I think we can improve is the formatting of the strings. It's not obviously obvious here, but it but it's a little weird that you know we only have one decimal point. Typically, when you deal with currencies, you want two decimal points. A way to make this look even worse is if I do 100.9, then it, it turns out the computation of that is 116 points, some very long decimal. The user only cares about showing 116.04, for example, if you're rounding. And so the way you can do that is using string format. So instead of calling tip amount to string, which will just take the value of that number and convert it to a string, we want to be a little smarter about how we do that conversion. And it's pretty easy to fix it. All we're going to do is use this as our format string and call the format method on that with the amount. And so we're going to do the same thing for the total amount. Okay, let's try that. So now if I type in 100, it's similar to before, except now you can actually see we have two decimal points after the value. And now if I do 100.9, we are properly showing only two decimal points, which is a much better user experience. If you've gotten this far, you're doing amazing work. We have at this point a very functional app. And the way we've made that possible is by having this business logic in mainactivity.kotlin. And we're basically listening for changes in either of the input forms, either the seek bar or the edit text. There's no submit button, so anytime a change happens, we're taking those values and combining them to calculate the tip and total. So the next step is to personalize this app and make it 
look really cool. We're gonna have some custom styles and we're also going to add a footer at the bottom. <laughs>